I didn't study any any film related course at university or anything like that um, but I always had definitely an idea that that's where I wanted to go into um, so when I graduated I just got a job as a runner at a post house um, which consisted it was during the 2012 Olympics and I just had to cycle tapes back from the Olympic village at the dead of night it's like two in the morning I would go over to Stratford on my bike and then cycle it into Soho um, and so that was great I didn't need any any kind of technical experience I didn't really know what I was doing um, but um, after that I was a runner for a year at the post house um, and again didn't know anything about how the the industry was kind of set up so they they did visual effects for commercials it's quite a specific niche but is very much a niche and um, so that year even though it wasn't exactly what I wanted to be doing allowed afforded me the chance to you know do some research about how how to do what I wanted to do really and and make money from it um so it was a it was a year of of running around finding people lunch and uh but also just getting to meet really great creative people who were who were kind of compositors and 3D people so after a year of working at absolute I I left there and um I became a runner for an editor who also cut commercials um, and he had just formed a little company so there were like four editors an assistant editor and me and a producer which was really where I learned how to use Avid and um, uh, got to cut some stuff as well so it, because it was a small company it was a nice environment where I could kind of like do a bunch of jobs at once um, and the assistant editor um, and the editors were very gracious in kind of bringing me up to speed and teaching me how to do all the technical stuff. Um, so that was great. And there it became apparent that if you wanted to cut commercials, which are a really great medium for, for editing, but um, not something that I was particularly interested in pursuing, it would have been in that kind of company. Um, but I wanted to always focus on long-form work, kind of... Um, TV drama and film so I started looking into what other people were doing to get those kind of jobs and I realized I had to go freelance to 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 get into kind of drama cutting rooms um, and I um, I went on this course called the Sarah Putt trainee scheme um, which was great um, it just puts a bunch of people in a similar position um, together every once a month and does a um, a series of kind of courses on how to manage your finances as a freelancer or um, how to prepare for a job interview. Um, not really technical stuff and they, they definitely don't offer a guarantee that they're going to find you work. But because I'd never been to film school, I hadn't really had a, a network of people who were all in similar positions um, and who were all were kind of like at a similar stage of their career. So it kind of afforded me just a really great group of people that I'm still friends with now and through that they they try and put you on productions and they also give you a big list of of all of the the films and tv shows that are kind of going to be start filming in the next couple of years so um I I contacted some people from the list and just tried to arrange you know meet and greets with some of the editors um because they're Sarah Putt's a talent agency, so they represent um, cinematographers, editors, production designers, costume department. Um, and so it's also a great way to just meet some of the people that they they represent. It's much easier once you've got some credits to get more. There's, um, there's always actually a shortage of assistant editors that um, on productions, there's so much TV work going on at the moment that um, once that step had happened, I found it much easier to get kind of um, jobs again you just meet people meet editors that you like working with meet post-production supervisors who are quite often the people that hire assistants um, and you meet producers through the contacts I made there um, I, I got the opportunity to edit stuff um, kind of at first international versions of TV shows so when they make a TV show for the UK they quite often sell it to the international audience as well and you have to do some re-editing 
sometimes just taking time out, in other cases putting time in to fit the requirements for the channels that it's going to. And um, it's a good opportunity for assistants to kind of flex their cutting muscles um, in a less stressed environment. Um, so I did some of that. You know, editors constantly are aware when the assistants want to edit and like editing. So they're more likely to kind of put stuff on your plate if, if you make that quite clear from the off. Um, and then about a year and a half ago, um, one of the editors I'd worked with as an assistant, Adam Bosman, um, was going on to do an adaptation of War of the Worlds, and, um, which was a three-part series for the BBC. Um, and he brought me on very graciously as, um, as an editor for one of the three episodes. It was kind of like editing with training wheels. Um, he was, he was, the reason why he really set it up was that he had just had a baby and um, when you're editing on a show, you, they normally want you to be near set um, so that when the director finishes a day of shooting, he can come to the editing department and have a look at the, the footage that he's filmed and um, you're just nearby really to, to solve any problems that come up during the shooting. But because he just had a baby, he couldn't spend the entire shoot, which was up in Liverpool, um, by set. So um, after the first couple of weeks, I stayed in Liverpool and he went back and worked from Cambridge. So there was, there was two of us working on the show, um, which meant that we, you know, when the footage would come in during the day, we'd split it up and say, Adam would say, you know, I'm going to do this scene and this scene and you can do this scene. And then at the end of the day, we'd show each other what we've done and um, talk about each other's work and um, just keep going like that. When you are the editor, there's not often that opportunity to bounce work backwards and forwards between people. You know, everyone's, everyone's busy and got their own stuff to do. So just to have that opportunity to say, hey, this is my interpretation of the scene, what do you think? And he would invariably say, eh, maybe I'll do it this, this way. And then you kind of go back and be like, yeah, that's much better. Um, so it was the perfect kind of training school for, for doing that. Um, do you think that's unusual to have that? Relatively, yeah, it is. But I think, I think the key is just being in the room for in cutting rooms. So w once you're an assistant, once you're in a trainee, when you speak to people and you make clear that you want to be an editor, um, they are so much more receptive to that kind of dynamic. I think if you try and if you set yourself a goal of being I need to be an editor by in X number of years is quite tricky because it really is just a chance a, a case of kind of chance encounters leading to you know um, kind of real great opportunities to edit stuff um, and it also depends on what type of editing you're doing um, so if you if you want to work on Marvel studio films that's not realistically probably going to happen in any time soon um, there's a lot of opportunity to do that kind of work but it's a much more rigorous system where you join as a trainee then you become a second then you become a first and then you have a very difficult leap to being an editor um, but it does happen it just doesn't probably happen b before your mid 30s or your 40 um, whereas TV is a, 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 a m there's more stuff being made more quickly and I guess the stakes are a bit lower in terms of the money going into the final product that um, you can probably start editing a bit sooner um, on on TV projects which is one of the reasons why is kind of goes back to what I was saying about like pick your route because lots of people that work on studio films are first assistant editors and it's a great career you can earn a very decent salary doing it and um, it's a very different job to editing so but they get to work on Spider-Man films and um, you know there's benefits to either way but if you're absolutely dead set on editing and not spending 15 years assistant editing um, it's probably best not to go into a studio film environment. Um, yeah, so it just really depends on, on kind of what you want to do. Well, I've just been reading um, a, uh, actually one of the interviews I was talking about um, from The Art of the Cut, and I thought the guy uh, who he edited, 
um, Black Panther, that was it. But he had done all of Stephen Kugler's films. Um, is that his name? I'm not sure. Um, and he was talking about the director basically said to him, like, you need to be a um, source of positivity in the editing room, which um, is, I think, really good advice for an assistant and also an editor. Um, in a sense, the director's got a million things to think about, so do the producers. It's always going to be quite fraught. And if you're adding to that tension, um, it's not going to be to the benefit of anyone. Um, so, I mean, it's pretty hard advice to keep to because stuff is stressful. Um, but if you can remain positive and just be a pleasure to work with, people are going to want you back there, probably more so than having any long list of technical qualifications, which people can always pick up. Being receptive to other people and and not speaking up when it's not appropriate you know if you're an assistant editor and you're in a doing a VFX review with all the producers and the execs and the director just kind of taking the lead from the room and not giving your opinion on stuff when it's there's already seven opinions in the room and it's probably not going to be helpful for anyone least of all you if you're really thinking oh I need to make this point and this point and this point um, people will be much more I think they'll see that they, they can trust you in a room full of a lot of different you know, personalities if you a, take a more of a backseat approach to kind of um, um, voicing your opinions, I guess. Which is not to say that you need to be a wallflower. Like, people value your opinion